This is the Misty Winston Show on today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to TNT Radio. I'm Misty Winston. We are headed into the third and final hour of today's show, and I'm very excited because I managed to keep my voice for the whole thing. Uh, It's been a battle. I'm dealing with some allergy stuff. Uh, I apologize if my voice sounds uh, ridiculous. I hate it. Um, But, you know, that's how it goes this time of year. Um, Really quickly, before I introduce our uh, final guest for today, I do just want to give one more reminder that tomorrow is a very important court date for journalist and publisher Julian Assange. Uh, So the extradition request will be sent back down to the magistrate's court, which will then be passed along to UK Home Secretary Pretty Patel. Um, so tomorrow there are going to be protesters uh, congregating outside of the Magistrates Court, uh, Westminster Magistrates Court, uh, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, local time. I do believe that the court proceedings begin at 10 15 a.m. local time. Um, there are a multitude of fantastic journalists who have a credit uh, accreditation to cover those proceedings. So if you are unable to attend, um, you can still follow along um, on social media and other platforms. Um, but if you are in the London area and you are able to make it out to magistrate's court, uh, the magistrate's court to show support and uh, protest against the extradition of Julian Assange. Please do so. We need lots of people in the streets. Um, So uh, just essentially what will happen tomorrow, it's going to be probably pretty brief. Um, It'll be signed off on and then sent to, as I said, UK Home Secretary Priti Patel. Um, And then the Assange defense team will have until May 18th to submit documents um, and basically uh, attempt to appeal to her better senses uh, if she has any um, and uh, encourage her to uh, deny that extradition. So um, tomorrow is just kind of a procedural thing, but we do need a huge show of support. Um, So if you're in the London area and you can make it out, please do so starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, Okay, so joining us for our final hour is repeat guest and friend of the show, Uncle Warren. He hosts his own show called uh, Extra Bola, uh, which you can find as part of Independent News Network or INN, which is across multiple platforms. They have really gone uh, crazy. They're on like every platform imaginable, I think. Um, And Warren, always makes me laugh so it's good to have him back on the show hey warren how are you today misty i'm doing great uh you don't you sound fine your voice do I? is great uh yeah yeah you you are awesome i sound sauce. weird to yes, myself ma'am. okay i sound weird to myself. we all sound weird to ourselves you know i would no, know but i mean I, worse I than usual little, <laughs> well it, it is kind of it is a little more sultry if you you know because you got you when you have that that nasal thing yeah and then you, you get the little, demi you get more little thing deeper. going on yeah yeah, yeah, only it's just without allergies, you know, I think, you know, but it's super annoying. <sighs> it's really annoying. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's it is balls cold here in uh, Brooklyn, New York. It was um, a week ago on Thursday. It was eighty three. Today it is uh, <laughs> forty three. Yeah, and you talk about trying to fight the bugaboos. You know, I hear I'm, you. I got the sniffles too. You know, I don't want to you know, know make anybody think I'm doing the uh, the coca plant. Uh, <laughs> it's actual sinus <laughs> things. So oh. I wish I, I mean, yeah. what now? Stay in school, kids. Uh, <laughs> don't so, do you drugs. Know, last time, <laughs> just say no. Last time I was, um, well, to some of them. I mean, well, you know, <laughs> the, ask your parents first. Uh, but the last time I was here, uh, I, I, I was so ridiculous. I said, I shaved and, and you, you know, you're like, Oh, it's radio. What do you shave? What for? So yeah. this week I just wore nice clothes. So hopefully you your, your audience jeans? will, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> did <you> get <laughs> I did get that. <laughs> Warren tweeted Yay! out that we were going to talk about our, how skinny jeans are. What'd you say? Um, they were designed to destroy God's humanity or something. To- Yeah, it's a God's punishment to humanity. Yeah. Yeah. So and they are, they really are. I don't see how um, men wear those, uh, especially when they have uh, equipment. So uh, but I'll keep it PG. Let's just say uh, I like hammer pants, you know, those parachute pants, you know, that make you look like a genie. Yeah. I know, right. My dad Explody. used to wear those all the time when I was little. No joke. Like the craziest patterns too. Um, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the crazier the better. Yeah, like bright purple, like zebra stripes. And yeah, it was very, they were very cool. I mean, they're not really, but um, they were at the time. I mean, it was a big <laughs> deal. Those were a very big deal. Uh they were very popular. Yes. They yeah. were, uh, I, you know, living down South though, uh, you didn't really see that much. That was more like a city thing, I think, uh, because, uh, uh, most of, most of the people I knew they wore baggy jeans, but not like to the extent of where, if you jumped out of an airplane, you could actually fly those, that <laughs> size, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit skinnier, but not skinny to where 
you know, you, you think you're getting a leg transplant or something like that. So right, anyway, right, 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 I, right, right. I, yeah. but I digress. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. This, this always happens when you're on the show, we end up talking about the weirdest <laughs> things. <laughs> and I needed this today. though. Know, that's right? why I'm glad that you're here. Cause I just talked to Piers Robinson about some really depressing stuff. And then I talked to Jason Burmis about some really depressing stuff. So it's good to have like an hour of laughter here at the end. I think it's a, that's a nice change of pace uh, because everything sucks right now. So hard. Uh, it's really a lot to keep up with. It's a lot. It's very depressing. Um, and so, yeah, laughter is good. I like laughter. I like these like little bursts of, um, nonsense, you know, it's kind of, it's fun. I think we all need it every once in a while. <sighs> we got to well, lighten up. I'm glad I could help. I, I I'm here <laughs> to help. And if you, if you had, if you had video, then it would be really funny. Uh, because you'd see the, uh, the get I'm wearing, um, I like to call it the Dollar Tree, uh, New Jersey mafia outfit. So <laughs> half of it is, uh, it's part track suit and just part, oh uh, I gave up sweatpants. So, oh, okay. um, I, but I don't, it's not official cause I don't have the piping. You know what I'm talking about? The piping oh, yeah. that goes along yeah, the yeah, seams, yeah. you know, yeah, that's yeah, official yeah. track suit. Uh, uh gear right there but i don't have that remember so, like the said, velour track suits those were something Ooh. the velour oh, those were very velour. soft yeah those were very you know, soft i had a i had a velour uh i had a velour bathrobe once and uh Ooh. oh my god i i didn't want to get out of it you know, I might but, need to get uh, one of those. That sounds lovely. <laughs> it was so, I can't remember how long ago it was. It was so comfortable and I just wore it like all the time. And, and I had to take it off though, because uh, the judge said, sir, you're in court. Uh, you're going to need to wear some regular <laughs> clothes in here. What, <gasps> sir, oh, this goodness. is what kind of injustice is this? And then I, then I did a Pacino and just started yelling, Attica, Attica, Attica. <laughs> What kind of democracy Just do we live no in if you can't wear your velour robe to the courthouse? You know what I mean? This is a demo. This is America. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it wasn't be- like I wasn't wearing socks and slippers. I mean, I had those on. Come on, I'm right? not a total animal, right? <laughs> um, oh goodness! I get to see Jimmy Dore tonight, Warren. How about that? You know, How about I that? was going to ask you if you're going to go see him. So uh, where's he going to be at? in uh, Columbus? Yep, he's in Columbus, Ohio tonight at the Funny Bone. I think uh, seven thirty. I think so. As soon as I leave here with you, I'm getting out of this chair and I'm changing my clothes and we're leaving and we're going. I'm gonna go see Jimmy Doris because I need to laugh, dude. Um, he he always puts on a good show. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, this will be the third time I've seen him. Uh, first time he's been to Ohio though. I think um, I, I've always had to go to Chicago to see him, uh, which is you know like a six six and a half hour drive for me um so oh, yeah. it's cool that he's like in my backyard that's nice that's very nice i like that a lot yeah it's gonna be fun i'm excited i don't know who all's gonna be there uh i think it's just him and staff um, perhaps i don't know i don't know it's, I, didn't I think from what i remember it's not like it's not like a panel show or anything like that so maybe just regular stand-up uh from yeah. what i understand so that's awesome he does, he does both um, kinds like he'll do some where he does like panel stuff and then he also does just regular stand-up shows so i'm not sure which one i'm getting into uh tonight i don't think anybody else has been announced uh so but i haven't really looked um at the website or anything i don't know if like kurt metzger is going to be there or like the last time i saw him in uh chicago aaron mate was there which was kind of cool um nice yeah Let's see. I don't see. It doesn't say anybody else on the website. So maybe it's just well, a watching a sh- show. Yeah, I think it is because I was watching. I was watching a show last night, and uh, I think Steph mentioned something about trying to find a permanent, well, or at least a st- uh, a regular home for the panel shows, right? And, yeah. Because uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since he's done those panel shows. Yeah, that's true. It has been a while. It was, be- it was before the pandemic, I think, for sure. So that's been at least yeah. a good couple of years. So um, yeah. I'm hoping he comes to New York. I really, I if he comes, I think Ron Placone's going to be here. Um, with Chris. Maybe next week. Yeah, with Chris, I think so. Yeah, so Indy, Chris my buddy Indy left. We're trying to get the, the New York contingent to go to that. So um that would be pretty cool i've never i've never seen ron before but i'd love to see jimmy i hope jimmy comes back to new york uh, i'm sure he will because i 
I want to see him. I don't know. He may know that there's a guy wearing a, a velour uh, <laughs> bathrobe Skinny and jeans. just say, yeah, he may say F that noise. Uh, no, no, thank you. He makes you. fun of skinny TDNT. jeans too. So yeah, you guys got that. In They're common. just ridiculous. All right, let's, let's just ridiculous. get this out in the open. Okay, they are they are just ridiculous. All right, and they've been around for a while too, you know. Yeah. Okay, and I I said okay, I put on a pair. Uh, I tried on a pair actually. They were corduroy. Uh, sk- they were, I guess they're skinny pants. I don't think they were jeans. So there was like corduroy, and I put those on, and uh, yeah, I I felt like I was being tortured uh, in some sort of Star Wars way uh, because I owed Jabba money. And I said, who in the right mind is going to wear these like and like Lots them? Of people. So I. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. It's they're hugely weird. uncomfortable. Like I'm a girl and yes. I don't like them. You know what I mean? They're really uncomfortable. Yes. But then like I like yoga pants and sweatpants. Like that's my <laughs> that's my yes. jam. I'm oh. like a very I'm a comfort girl. You know what I mean? Like just give me a, a hoodie and a, like some yoga pants and I'm good. I'm good. I don't need, I don't want to be fancy. <laughs> like are you, jeans are too fancy. <laughs> that's why jeans are too fancy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, now I'll wear jeans. All right. So I guess, I guess technically I'm a little fancier than you, which is fine. Fancy, yeah. Uh, I would live in which I had, pants if the world would let me. I would. Oh, I would too. Yes. I would too. I, like I said, I'm in them now and I have to wear the hoodie because uh, it's, we're in that weird part of the year right where it's quote unquote spring but it's really just winter and a half kind of thing going on so like i said it was 83 last week in one day and then today is 43 so i live in this brownstone and uh i don't control the heat right so uh i think it's like some sort of weird i don't know if there's like you know like keebler elf type people that come in and like you know (laughs) do that sort of magic and wicca kind of stuff but anyway long story short heat ain't on today daddy's in the hoodie and the sweatpants with with uh long johns underneath although some people call them leggings and i'm like wait a minute they're not leggings okay they're they're long johns all right they may look like leggings but they're long. Chunks. So what do Let's they, what do they do? Perfectly. They just like turn, like once it hits a certain date, they turn the heat off and it just doesn't come back on or what, or do you not know? It's really like some Keebler elves <laughs> who come and do your heat. Well, I mean, you know, that's my theory. And yeah. uh, I mean, I know there's like strangers that roam around the building sometimes and uh, I'll notice broken things get fixed or, uh, oh. you know, there'll be yeah. extra toilet paper in the bathroom. I have a very cool situation here. I'm like, I'm kind of in a, uh, um, what do they call it? Like a, uh, um, boarding house situation type thing. Right. So we yeah, all yeah, have yeah. rooms, okay. you know, but then they're all separate addresses. Right. And, uh, so each floor has their own bathroom and, uh, it's great. They have, a. Uh, uh, the maintenance service comes by once a week and they, they clean the bathroom and they put in uh fresh toilet paper and nice. uh, it's all clean and stuff. I have not, I've been in here over oh, nine so You don't have to clean your I, bathroom. <gasps> oh no. So oh no, 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 no. I'm Those so, are for I the elves. Bathrooms. Yeah. Okay. The elves do that or the witches. I, need some I can't elves, remember who Warren. it is. I need some elves it, in my house. Look, it, I I live okay. It's like it's a it's like a pocket universe that I live in in this building because the outside of this pocket universe is all expensive. You gotta buy all the stuff yourself, type world, and I don't want any part of that. So right. here, I haven't bought toilet paper. Okay, I I may I think I bought one roll of toilet paper uh, in nine years, which is uh, wow astounding yeah the rent's that good is the rent's good the the landlord he he's a character okay so he does he's not your typical new york landlord all right he's my he's kind of a throwback he bought these buildings he bought three buildings in the 70s uh when when this area of brooklyn was like a war zone right but he bought them for thirty thousand dollars a piece and now they're probably worth a hundred times that but wow. this guy himself, 
he was a cab driver and I think he got in an accident or something. And he got some big payout. So he was able to buy the stuff, but he does spoken word concerts, or at least he used to like in Eastern Europe. Right. So he would go to like Croatia and all these places and he'd have like the headgear on. And he's a big dude. He's like around my height. He's around like six, four. He looks like Richard Harris from Harry Potter, but he sounds like Larry King, which is which is <laughs> a, a, a contradiction of just all kinds of styles. So whenever he calls me up, he's like, hey, Warren, you got the red. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Newport, New Jersey. Hello, this is Larry King. <laughs> it's very uh, he's one of the he's one of the last remaining New York characters, I believe. Right. They're, they're just yeah. disappearing. They're all turning into hipsters. Yes. Well, it's gentrification. Yay. Everybody's a hipster now. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. <sighs> but he sounds cool. I mean, I was, like him already. Oh, yeah. And he, you know, knock on wood, he hasn't raised the rent in nine years. You know, nice. like I said, he's he he is an outlier. He is not. I, 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 he may not even be from this planet. I mean, I'm, That's I'm possible. thinking he may be, he could be from like, uh, you know, somewhere outside the solar system, um, some planet where rent is cheap and, uh, you don't have to buy toilet paper. I want to live on that planet. Me too. Uh, to be honest, with you. he won't take me back though. He, he won't tell me where he's from. And it's just sad. Oh. It saddens me. I would like I, to I, know I, can't, I don't even know where he's from. I want off of this planet. Holy cow, dude. We're getting bombarded. Like, I was just, when I was talking to Piers earlier, Dr. Robinson, I keep calling him Piers like we're besties. <laughs> we're not. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Piers. Robinson. Um, I just like his name and he's very cool. I mean, listen, he's a propaganda expert. So you can imagine my fangirling, right? Um, so right. I know it's weird. I fangirl over like journalists and propaganda experts. And, you know, <laughs> most people fangirl over athletes and actors. Uh, no, that's not me um but yeah i was just talking to him about like we're it, he has this great piece out uh, in panda where he's talking about how we're being bounced from crisis to crisis uh and that's legitimately mm. what's happening dude i feel like it's the it, it's a constant bombardment of nonsense all the time uh you know it started it, really it started ages ago but if we just talk like the last two years like we went right off of covid right into ukraine um and then i think mm. probably in the fall we're gonna get slammed back into the covid stuff again uh and it's it's like just constant it really is just con and then julian the julian assange thing is tomorrow so i'm super stressed out about that uh it's a lot there's a lot going on i went off this planet somebody find me one of those um uh, alternate universes that they talk about in the multiverse. I want, there's gotta be a better one. Can I, can I, can I try a different one, please? <laughs> well, oh. I, I'll, I'll talk to my landlord. I'll see where his spaceship is. Uh, I okay. don't know if it's like a spaceship or if it's like a, a interdimensional can just open portal, a portal thing. Yeah. Just give me a portal. He might. Give me a portal. Yeah. I noticed, I noticed the bathroom downstairs is always broken. So maybe that's just a, a maybe cover that's for the, the portal. The, it yeah. might be, but you'd have to come to you'd have to come to Brooklyn. I don't think it's portable. It's not a portable portal. I'll come thing. to Brooklyn if it I means I can get out of here. I'm down. I'll okay. come to Brooklyn. I got no. Yeah, pack your bags. Okay. All pack right. Your sweat, yeah, because my sweat kid, pants. my kid. Um. I, oh yes, I'll pack my sweatpants. <laughs> my kid watches. Well, I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say my kid watches because legitimately I watch it too. But there's this show. It used to be. Uh. I think it's off the air now. Well, I mean they play replays, but uh, it's called Star versus the Forces of Evil. It was on Disney XD, and I love that show so much. And in that show, they have um inter interdimensional scissors. So you can like cut like your little portal, like you just cut the fabric of <laughs> time, space, time, Ooh, and then you can nice. enter into the portal. I know. And so uh, I found some uh, uh, I found some like they're legitimate scissors. They actually work. You can actually use them to cut paper and stuff. Uh, but I found some and I, <laughs> I really was desperately hoping that it would work and there would be a portal and there's no portal and I want my money back. <laughs> I feel ripped off. Oh, I went out of here. You know it's so terrible. That, that's funny you you mentioned that uh because i always just had this fantasy of like if uh you know how there's they've sent probes and and stuff to mars and uh it's probably going to be a while before they actually send humans there um i want to be the first one to just say look i'll go one way i i don't i you know just give give me some uh you know capri sun packs and uh you know maybe some little debbie snack cakes 
um mm. the, the nutty bars i got ooh, the nutty bars i could i could literally live off not nutty bars for a year and a half so just put me yeah. in the in the rocket you, you can even put me in one of those elon musk dick rockets i don't give a i don't give a, a, a can wait you, oh, I'm sorry, I, I thought that was that. um bezos bezos was the wiener rocket oh, was wasn't it, Be- it i think so or were they both I, wiener rockets oh, i don't yeah, know that's I don't right remember. no you're right you're right okay. you're right i yeah I, I uh I don't know what shape. I Elon feel like Musk's he was trolling are. us though, honestly, because he he like he's got the whole Doctor Evil thing going on, uh, and then in the in Austin Powers there there was a penis rocket. So I feel like honestly that he was just trolling us, <laughs> and I have to get if it's true, which I have to give him credit. I mean he's got a sense of humor, and I I mean he's still a douche, but I appreciate that. Like I like a good troll as much as the next person, and I feel like he was legitimately trolling us with that. I really do. It was good. He totally didn't good. put those two together. I mean, I, I mean, I just figured think? he was, he was a, he was a penis. No, and no, it makes sense when you say it like that, yeah. like Doctor Evil and Penis Rocket. That sounds like, yeah, yeah, that I'm, totally in, sounds like. In Austin like Powers, that. there's the Penis Rocket, and he, everybody compares him to Doctor Evil. He does have that kind of vibe, and so I think he was just trolling us. I think he was like, yeah, I'm gonna make a Penis Rocket. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I'm Doctor Evil. Wow. Here's my Penis Rocket. You know. I really do think so. It's and if it's while. true, it's a good troll. I appreciate it. I it's been a while since I've seen those movies. I I I uh I didn't put two and two together. That is you're yeah. a genius. I know. That is amazing. <laughs> I am. Oh my but yeah, goodness. I really do feel like he was trolling us. And I I mean, as much as he sucks and is a terrible human being, uh, I still can appreciate a good troll. And I think that he was probably just trolling us. And it's funny. I mean, that's really funny. I'll, I'll send you the screenshot of the penis rocket and Austin Powers. Uh, Cause it's, I mean, it, <laughs> okay. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> are you going to send, are you going to send me a dick pic? Is that what it is? My I goodness. How, how times have changed. I totally am. Oh Lord. <laughs> but it's Usually not unsolicited. the other way around. It's not unsolicited. No, I, you're, I, you're, you're, we're, well, kind of, I'm forcing it upon you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to send it to you. You didn't request it. No. Nah, uh, I'm a willing participant. That's fine. Okay. So, you know, don't worry. Consent's don't worry about important, that. Warren. I, Consent is important. Now you've, you've, you've intrigued me. You've piqued my interest now, not in penises, but in general, but uh, just about the, the, the penis rocket. So I wish we, were, I I wish would. we were on video so I could bring it up. Cause it's funny. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we'd have to cut to one of those uh, technical difficulty <laughs> slates with the, the happy seventies <laughs> music and that kind of thing. But I would, I, they, they said, Warren, we're going to put you in this penis rocket. We're going to, it's a one-way trip. You got to take all this uh, stuff to Mars, set us up something. So when like the real astronauts show up, uh, you'll be fine. And uh, I'd be like, like I said, Nutty Bars, um, Capri Sun. Dude, I haven't had a roll. Nutty Bar to... in ages, and now I want one. They're so mm, good. Sounds good. I think out of the, yeah. the the line of Little Debbie snack cakes, I'd say, I, I, it, me personally, the Nutty Bars are the ones that reign supreme. Everything else is just kind of like a hostess knockoff, you know? Yeah. And you're just like, it's like, you really didn't try very hard and uh it's not even that much cheaper so it's not really worth it but the nutty bars ooh you got the crunchy layers of chocolate and peanut butter and a little a little taste of disappointment cuz you know it's not like a real snack but you know you you could you just like that aftertaste is the disappointment you're like oh there yes. it is there it is this is why i wasted money on these things um yeah. but i would i would set i would set up camp on mars and then, uh, you know, I, it would be like that movie, The Martian, only I wouldn't know what the, the hell I was doing and uh, things would go wrong. And uh, then I'd just be a skeleton when they showed up. So it would just be a really short movie. And uh, yeah, but still would might be a lot better there than uh, with what's going on here on uh, our little <laughs> uh, third rock from the sun. You know what I'm saying? I, yes, I just I just terrible. sent you. I just sent you a thing in your Twitter DMs if you want to look at it. It's a side by side of the Bezos rocket and the Austin Powers rocket, and it's really funny. And everybody that's listening <laughs> should go check it out too. Did you see? Right. I told you. I told you. I'm okay, you, so he, all right, controlled us. I'm so you. it looks like the the Austin Powers one is circumcised, and uh, <laughs> so I'm assuming that uh, Jeff either didn't want to spring for the moil. 
or he just uh he likes a fireman's helmet okay you know it's it's yeah. whatever you like you whatever you like i don't judge but, but yeah tell me, i, I think see what you mean I, yeah He's totally trolling us. Okay, we have to take a quick break. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back with more talk of penis rockets. I don't know what what happens with us, Warren. I don't know what happens. Everybody, hang tight for a couple minutes. We'll be right it's back just here on TNT Radio, do, baby. <laughs> when you need to know what's going on around the world and at home, keep it on today's News Talk Radio TNT. TNT. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Misty Winston. We are in the home stretch with my good friend, the hilarious Uncle Warren. Uh, he hosts a show called Extra Bola on INN, which is Independent News Network. Uh, they're on um, all the platforms. I don't even know. Like, Indy, I was just on Indy show last night, and uh, um, he rattled off, like, uh, all of them. Rockfin, Odyssey, Rumble, um, Twitch, TikTok. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They're on all the platforms. Uh, and Warren hosts a really funny show. Uh, everybody should go check that out for sure um you always make me laugh and that's good we get very distracted and we don't make sense a lot of the times uh but that's okay because i laugh and that's really all that matters um so yeah there we go there we have it i think i think <sighs> i think we have uh the same kind of brain patterns you and i kind of like uh, i mean when we have to be structured we can do it it's yeah. kind of a, a pain in the butt but it's we can do it but i think our brains naturally want to go uh, like, like water flowing down a hill. It just goes the path Wherever of least resistance. That's where the yeah. thoughts go, you know? Yes. And, uh, I wanted to, I, I think, uh, for the listeners, I want to apologize for saying the D word, uh, earlier, you know, I, uh, I, I forgot my radio etiquette and, uh, because oh, now, right. uh, I, I've been doing the show, uh, extra bola, which is on Thursday nights, depending on, uh, the availability of the guests. So that the time kind of goes all over the place, but, uh, it's a, it's a little bit of potty mouth on, uh, the show. I'm doing this new thing now. It's called, uh, extra bola secret show. So basically what it is, it's just me. And, uh, I just have fun with the chat and then the chat brings up some topics and then I'll just try and look it up on the, on the internet. And we just have some fun. Uh, we did it last night. Well, technically this morning, it's like right after midnight usually is when it comes on and I don't give anybody any warning, usually like a 15 minute warning and that's it. And so last night we were talking about, uh, all kinds of stuff. And then it somehow ended up with, uh, talking about Pornhub and the various, uh, different, uh, genres, shall we say, uh, that are on Pornhub and uh it got it got really uh it got really saucy i'm not used to that kind of talking type dirty stuff but you know that's some <laughs> dirty people in that chat so i blame them um so that's why i kept saying the d word so i apologize for that it's okay i mean they're pretty chill about it. i will say that uh orf ruined it matt orfala uh so they're pretty chill about language i mean like within reason obviously um but then matt orfala came on and i swear to god somebody go back and count but i swear it was like 982 f-bombs in an hour uh <laughs> 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 i was like okay. i mean even i was like and i have generally speaking uh, not on this show but on my other show i have a potty mouth like i it, i mean i curse like a sailor um and so i it not, that kind of stuff doesn't offend me in any way and even i was like cringing a little bit i'm like oh matt <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah now i have to I have to warn people to be a little bit more careful i mean it's they're they're pretty chill about it uh you know if one slips out here or there it's okay uh, but you know, sometimes <laughs> it can be a little excessive, even glory Jones, glory Jones, who, uh, it's like the, every third word is the F word. Uh, she, uh, came oh, on the God. show and I think she only dropped it once. I was very proud of her. Uh, that's, that's, that's showing a serious restraint on the part of glory Jones. So, um, shout out to her. Good job, glory. We're proud of you. <laughs> well, but you yeah, or the, definitely uh, ruined you it. Yeah, the the we his, his name is spelled he the short version of his name is O R F and you know what the F stands for in his <laughs> name now so yeah um, we do now just be, yeah. glad, just be glad uh our buddy uh Shadow Band Refugee wasn't on I know. my goodness 
I know. Oh, Lord, uh, actually, it's so think, funny. Uh, uh, I was on a Franco <laughs> show. Uh, my dear friend Franco. Everybody, please go check out Frank Analysis. F R A N C Analysis. I love Franco. He does has a great show on MCSC Network. Um, but I was on Franco's show with Jesse, uh, my uh, who was also a TNT presenter. He's on the hour before my show. Jesse Zerowell, a longtime friend of mine. He's a co-host on my other show, Facts on the Ground. Uh, he's my homie. I love him, uh, and he's doing a great job on his show as well. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, we were on Franco's show and, uh, shadow ban was in the chat and Jesse said, yeah, I really like shadow ban. I like this. Stuff. I've read his articles and stuff. I need to get him on my show. And I immediately was immediately was like, no, Jesse, not on TNT. Maybe we'll do it on facts, but not on TNT. <laughs> you cannot have him on TNT. You can't do that. <laughs> Because it really is, I, I mean, Shadow Band Refugee uh, wears the F word out. I mean, legitimately wears it out. Uh, so it is, like, honestly, every third word, I think. Uh, so, yeah, he yeah. had to rethink that. So we're going to, I think we're going to have him on facts instead, <laughs> where it's a little a little yeah. less restrictive on language. Yeah, that's that's probably a good call. I mean, and, and thank goodness, uh, you know, you don't have, like, uh, the, beep, the bleep button, you know, the bleep sound on here for... Because if he got on here, that's all you hear was just a solid that would be tone. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I've uh, been on this. Pl- I've, been, I've been around for 53 years, and uh, I don't think I've never heard the F-bomb that much in one setting. He's like the Costco of uh, F-bombs. Like, if you want a whole bunch <laughs> in a short amount of time. That's your boy right there. <laughs> Shadow ban refugees, your guy. Yeah. Uh, I immediately had to uh, uh, step in and be like, no, Jesse, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Uh, no, 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 I don't no, think no, that no, that no, would no, be no. good. <laughs> no, 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 no. But we'll have them on facts. I mean, we can have them on facts on the ground. Uh, we've been kind of on hiatus a little bit. We've been trying to pop up here and there and do shows. Uh, but it's I mean, life has been kind of ridiculous over the last month. We both started our shows on TNT like at the same time, kind of. I think he started like the week before I did. Um, and so, uh, he started his new show. I started my new show. I had, I was planning DC. So I was trying to get through all of that. And so we just, and we've kind of been on hiatus with everything. I just did a recent episode of bitch, um, uh, bitch with comrade Missy, uh, Jesse jet, uh, contact me and he had written two new pieces. So I just was like, okay, we'll do one. Um, but yeah, we haven't really done any facts on the ground or any, uh, I think we did, we've done one, uh, facts on Friday. Uh, since we started our TNT shows, um, it's we're just very busy. I mean, all of a sudden we just became very busy. I know Jesse's writing; he's doing some work with Panda. Um, so yeah, it's uh, we need to get back at it though. We definitely need to. I at least want to do facts on Friday. I think um, I would love to continue to do facts remain uh, because I'm a true crime nerd. And uh, right. I love like we were doing we were trying to cover cases from like missing and uh, murdered indigenous women or missing and murdered black girls and women, um, you know, cases that don't get a lot of, like missing and murdered uh, sex workers, cases that don't get a lot of coverage. I mean, it, when the whole Gabby Petito thing happened, we saw the white woman syndrome where if it's a pretty little blonde girl with blue eyes, uh, it gets all kinds of coverage and everybody freaks out about it for, you know, months and months. And it's all anybody can talk about. But if it's a, you know, a, a young black girl goes missing nobody cares <laughs> it's really uh it's really uh, disheartening so we were trying to do a lot of coverage of um you know those kinds of cases that don't get any attention so i really really like that 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 whole show like actually kind of meant something so i would really like to pick that back up um once we kind of get our lives schedules and all that stuff kind of settled down a little bit now that i'm post dc i feel like i can breathe a little bit more yeah, you ha- you have been all over the place. Yeah, I mean you. I mean you've been to DC, and uh, with this show too. Uh, I was I was talking to somebody the other day uh, about how uh, three hours a day of a being, uh, you know, being on the radio. If you if you're if you're at a music station, you don't talk that much. You talk during right. the commercial breaks, but for talk radio. It's just the opposite. You have very few commercials and then you're talking the whole time. So, you know, yeah. and uh, I, I, I just got to give you kudos for that. I couldn't do it. Our, our buddy, Reef it's a Breland, lot. Reef Breland. You got to get, yes. you got to get Reef Breland a show on here. Cause he'll, he'll fill three hours and he'll say, what you gotta, you gotta, you're going to do commercials. No, 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 no. You're taking away from my time. Yeah, he won't so, even need guests. He'll just talk for three hours. 
<laughs> he would, and he'll, he'll admit it too. He will admit yeah. it that he could when he's, he blames his ADHD. as okay, you know. But, I have ADHD uh, too, homie. Yeah, he is. Well, yeah, he's just a talker. That, I like he, that though. He's a machine. He's like he, he's like Misty 2.0. Like they took Misty <laughs> back to the shop, upgraded her her motherboard, uh, put in some you know extra RAM, and uh, you know, and and then wow. I, I've, I've never, I've, I, when I'm on shows with reef, it's just, I get to rest. It's great. Oh, you know, yeah. cause I'm old and tired. You know, I like to let these I need to have him on, go. um, like once a week so that I can, uh, like rest and just take a break, especially this. Uh, so <laughs> last week, last week I had the flu. Um, so I was it, uh, like, I was, ter- mm. it was terrible. I was str- like, I struggled so hard, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of my shows. I should apologize to my audience. I'm, I have no idea, um, who I talked to or what we talked about. It was a struggle just to get through it. Um, I did, I got through it somehow. Uh, but then, uh, so right after DC, I ha- had, was losing my voice. So Monday, Tuesday, I was like struggling with my voice. And then Wednesday I got sick Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I had the flu. Um, and then this week now, I have allergies i cannot catch a break <laughs> i'm like what is happening uh so yeah i uh it, it's been kind of a struggle the last couple of weeks and i would just really like to get to a point where i'm healthy and my voice is solid and uh i can you know have conversations with people without having to worry about sounding super nasally or um passing out because there was a couple times on wednesday thursday friday last week where i thought i'm gonna pass out in the middle of my own show and my producer is gonna be like what is going on where'd she go (laughs) 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 my guest is gonna be like sitting there like uh okay (laughs) well if you if you have if you have if you have reef on you're fine just take a nap, yeah. you know, get your rest, you know, get get your seven hours or eight hours, or whatever they say, you know, go out, yeah. get something to eat, come back, you know, he'll still yeah. be going. It's great. He'll still be talking. Um, yeah. I've funny. done, I've done that before where I've, I've been quote unquote sick uh, and couldn't remember people and stuff, but that's usually, that was when I lived in LA and that was usually when I went down to Tijuana, but that was for a totally oh. different reason. That had nothing to do with flu. Um, no, I, think I was, was legitimately uh, sick. And I haven't yeah, been sick in a was, long uh, time. <sighs> this this was alcohol time. induced, I think. So uh, I I Mine may I may or may not still have my liver. I don't know. I'll have to uh, <laughs> see a a general <laughs> practitioner about that. Maybe a surgeon. I don't know. Do you know if you go? Here's totally random. If you go down to New Orleans, do you ever hear the stories about going down to New Orleans and uh, wandering in the wrong wrong place? And the the next thing you know, you wake up in a bathtub full of ice and your kidneys missing. You ever heard those stories? Yeah, I have heard those stories. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty creepy. It's like totally true. Yeah. I mean, it didn't happen to me. Uh, and I don't know anybody that it happened to personally, but uh yeah. The the thing is, it's like, um, I mean, where are they finding these bathrooms? I mean, the with and and these bathtubs to put the people in. It's like that's not what New Orleans is known for. I mean, there's a lot of showers, it's very humid down there so people like to get in they get out they don't really have time for a bath because what's the point you get out of the bath you dry off now you're you're sweaty again so but apparently there's enough bathtubs for uh kidney removals so uh (laughs) how did we get comedy bits for the week (laughs) (laughs) we're not talking about kidney kidney removal oh okay all right no (laughs) i'm down that's my i'm down that's my Seinfeld thing. That's uh, yeah. Hey, you ever wonder why they have so many bathtubs? You know that kind of thing. And then the I hear the crickets and I go home and cry myself to sleep. That's usually my comedy uh, career whenever I Experience. do stand up. So yeah, yeah. I, hear I, I could not do stand up. Uh, I've done, you could. I could you not. You could. Anybody could can not. do stand up. No, I hate you speaking in public. Have, hate it. Hate all, it. Which I know sounds weird. Do is, Cause I talk all the time. Like that's my job is to talk, um, which, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> people at protests get mad at me because, um, I don't want to give speeches. Like it's, uh, it's like pulling teeth. I don't want to do it. Um, uh, so I'll avoid it if I can, like I will 100% avoid giving speeches, uh, which it sucks when you're the organizer because you can't avoid it. You have to do it. Uh, but yeah, I will, I hate speaking in public. I can speak all day long on the radio, on YouTube, on zoom, whatever. I can do that all day long. But if I'm like standing in front of a group of people, I hate it. 
It's so awful. And I'm so awkward. I'm like an awkward person just in general. Uh, but then you give me a microphone and like 50 people in front of me and I will guarantee you it will be painful. <laughs> it's terrible. But so bad. That's that's how comedians feel, though. They uh, I mean, they may not show it on the outside, but they feel every uh, at least all the ones that I know that I've ever worked with. We all feel awkward. It's, it, it Comedy is an awkward business. That's why you're getting up there and and spilling your guts to people. You're getting that awkwardness out. Just think if you were doing bitch. But instead of being uh, in the comfort of your home, you're standing in front of a microphone with a lot of lights so you can't see the people. That's another good thing is you have like these blinding lights so you really can't see the crowd in a lot of these places. And you just do your bitch. And then you don't have to wait for a response from anybody. You just do like 10, 15 minutes. And then they bring out the big giant wooden uh, hook and they pull you off the stage, you know, and, the da -da 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 <laughs> and that's it. That's your comedy career. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, but I'm excited you get to see Ron Placon. I've never seen Ron uh, uh, live. Um, really, I'm more jealous that you get to see Chris Mohan. I mean, no offense to Ron, but I love Chris Mohan. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, but I did see one thing they, but they put like their, uh, I don't know if you call it like your schedule, I guess, or whatever of the, of their, uh, event. Um, and it, they gave Chris like 10 minutes and then they gave some politician, some candidate running for office, like 30 minutes. And I'm like, uh, I would be angry what? if I bought tickets to that show and I went to see the comedians and the the opener got 10 minutes and then some politician got up there for 30 minutes. I would be annoyed. Uh, so I'm I I, I, I I protest that Chris should get more time. Chris should get more time, fam. 100 percent. Chris is funny. I, haven't, I like Chris a lot. I, I, I've. I've seen a little bit uh, of his stuff on, uh, on on online, so uh, I uh, I would love I'd love I'd love to see him and Ron. I mean, comedy in general is just uh, there's nothing like live comedy. There really isn't. I mean, even if you suck as a comedian, the vibe in a comedy place, like you know, I've never played any big clubs or anything like that. I've always like done like open mics or I've done like once a month uh shows with uh with with some of my pals in LA and we just that was just I that was the the one night of the month that I always looked forward to because uh not just because of the jokes and who's telling the jokes but just the overall atmosphere of a comedy night you know you yeah. especially like if you're preparing to go on stage everybody has different ways of you know getting hyped up ready for the thing uh i had a buddy of mine he would listen to just nothing but like you know heavy metal music he plug it in you see him just bobbing his head like you know like he's yeah. ready for the mosh pit and some <laughs> people would just go over yeah just and he was great too it's this guy from texas uh Oh, forgot his name. Oh man. Anyway, uh, a, a, a mutual friend of his is coming up tomorrow. As a matter of fact, uh, my buddy, Brad, uh, that we did, we did comedy with him too. And, um, I'm going to see him tomorrow, but just the overall vibe is just being, it's kind of like going to a concert. Like it's music that you really yeah. like and that feeling that euphoria, the endorphins or whatever that you get once the show's over, you're like, you go home and or maybe have an after party or something like that, whatever. But you just so feel so good from it. And that's what the beauty of comedy is. It's medicine. You know, it's like yeah. when you go to a comedy show, you're going to a healthcare facility, basically. For, yes, because laughter for is medicine. Mental. That's real talk. Yes, is. that is real talk. That's why I love Jimmy Dore shows, honestly, because uh, not just because he's I mean, he's funny. I mean, obviously, he's a longtime comedian. He's been very successful. He's funny. Um, but it's also you're right, the atmosphere and especially at like somebody like Jimmy Dore, because it's it's all people coming who are like minded. Um, and so it's mm -hmm. this whole other level of like, you know, these are my people, you know what I'm saying? Like I get these people all, and it feels like you're in a room full of, you know, hundreds of your friends, even despite the fact that they're all strangers, uh, which, and, and I've right. never really, I've never really been much into comedy. Like I've never been to a ton of comedy shows. I think I went to one ages ago, John Caparillo, 
um, who's very funny, but uh, we went to see him. He's an Ohio guy. Um, and we went to see him in Columbus a long time ago. And he was really great. Um, but I've never been to a lot of comedy shows. But Jimmy Dore shows are really, it is kind of, it's like a whole experience. Um, you know, just even just like standing in line waiting to get in you're it's it's like an experience you get to meet people um you know who right. uh, get it and who are like-minded like we I, I remember the first time we saw him we met a bunch of chicago uh, teachers union people or yeah like the union people um and they were great it was just it's a lot of fun and a lot of people like from twitter uh all go to the shows and so you get to meet people in real life which is awesome it's always great to meet twitter people in real life um you know it's always a good time but yeah i get it like i get that whole uh i don't know if it's necessarily like a concert because live music is well, um i don't know it's it's but different it, it is but an like experience the the yeah the concept is the same. I like, yeah, you yeah. definitely get different experiences at a music show because a, you know, it's like constant music all the time, but for the most part, whereas with comedy, you have com like comedians will come up and do sets. And a lot of times there's a applause breaks. So they wait for, for, so it's not like this constant boom, 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 because music, yeah. uh, the re is that resonance, you know, that it, li it literally physically moves you um yes because of the sound waves and like the different kinds of music that you listen to and how it affects you and that sort of thing and to me comedy is kind of the same thing it's kind of like because you have different flavors of comedians too right you have you have your your crazy wackadoodles like shouting to the top of the uh the the, the rafters or you have your more cerebral comics that make you think about the comedy that sort of thing whatever j you jive with um that there's some resonance there as well um there's this place in uh long island city which is basically right right there on the queens uh Br brooklyn borough line right and it's uh there's this place it's called the creek and the cave okay so your top floor is where like your paid acts are like you get some you know decent names that come through there and they do their shows and whatnot but if you go down to the basement that's where like uh how can i describe it it's more like thunderdome right it's almost like uh you know like these 80s uh cage match type situations <laughs> so you you put your name in a bucket and uh so you don't know when you're going to go up so they they feel they feel in the bucket and they pull your name out and they call you up you get like maybe like three minutes something like that but the setup is crazy it is just way too damn loud and maybe I'm just too old now, but that is just way too loud down there. And I think they do that on purpose to try to freak people out on the stage with you while you're doing comedy to your left. There is a piano player kind of looks like he's from some sort of dystopian saloon and uh, he'll kind of play along with you if you're doing a certain kind of riff or whatever. And then to the right behind you is this rather large fellow who sits at this teeny tiny table with a pitcher of beer as if though he was going to uh, provide some sort of judgment on your life after your set was over. So uh, it's, it, that and sounds it's intense. Loud and it's right. I, and I can't be sure, but I think, I think there's some homicides going on there uh, in another part <laughs> of that area. But I, I, I don't have any proof. I don't want to blame anybody. You know, I don't want to get me in trouble, but that when I say Thunderdome two go in and one comes out, and uh, somebody is master blaster down there. I'm not quite sure. But it, it, once again, it's an experience. It may not be an enjoyable experience for some people, but for me, it was because uh, I kind of like that random anarchy kind of situation type thing. Glavin. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just went fun. to the um, the stand up for Assange uh, thing that Randy Credico hosted in D.C. Oh, he did it on the right. Sunday before our event. And honestly, that was so much fun. I wasn't sure like what how because he's hosted them before and I've watched them, but I wasn't really sure how it would uh, how it would play out like being live in the room. Um, and so it was kind of cool. He would, he did it very smart. Uh, he had uh, different people come up um, who are not comedians to introduce comedians. So like John Kiriaku was there, who's like a like nice. one of my heroes. I mean, I don't have a lot of heroes, but he's a whistleblower um, and he's fantastic. And so he came up um, and so, uh, you know, and then it was like um, 
Uh, so John F. O- O'Donnell was there, who is hilarious. Mm. If you guys, he's been yeah. on the show. Uh, if you're not familiar with John F. O'Donnell, you should definitely check out his comedy. He's so funny. And Jaffer Khan was there too. He's also uh, a former uh, correspondent for Redacted Tonight. So hilarious. Oh my God. He was so funny. I was like, d- like damn near crying. Uh, it was so good. Um, and then of course, Lee Camp was there. Randy's also a comedian. And then he had people like Medea Benjamin and uh, Marianne Williamson, which don't get me started but you know it is what it is uh <laughs> i mean she just annoyed me honestly warren i'll call her out because it, it's it offended me because she got up there in her like in front of the camera with her microphone and she's talking about how we need to do more for julian assange and we have to make we have to get louder we have to be we have to make it politically uncomfortable for these people which is all stuff that i say all the time she's absolutely right okay but then she didn't come to the actions so it's like what are you what are you talking about? We need to do more. And then you're not going to show up to the actual actions that we're hosting for Julian Assange. Like what? It was just, uh, it bothered me. It bothered me. I don't like the hypocrisy. If you're going to get up there and preach about how we need to do more, then you need to show up. And so I was bothered by that. It just really annoyed me. And I was really genuinely trying uh, to go in with an open mind because I've given her some stuff on Twitter and I don't think she likes me very much and that's fine. Um, But, you know, I was really hoping that she would actually like put her money where her mouth was and show up to an action. And she did not. Uh, Katie Halper showed up, though. Shout out to Katie Halper. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for walking the walk and actually showing up. Uh, You know, that was cool. Um, Okay. Yeah, Mary. Oh, sorry. no, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, Marianne uh, kind of sounds to me like an opportunist. You know, yes. it just seems like, OK, I'll do this on camera. But uh, no, I don't I don't have time to do some actual uh, action. Uh, yeah. I got to get home and clean these orbs and these crystals <laughs> aren't going to clean themselves either. Yeah. So, yes, it just you know, bothered me. Night. Like if you're going to if you're going to get up there and preach to people about how we need to do more, then you need to show up. Like what it, it yeah, it was very um it seemed very opportunistic, very hypocritical. I don't do hypocrisy. Um and it was just offensive to me that, you know, while the camera's on, you know, you want to talk big and bad about, you know, doing more and getting louder and fighting for Julian and then when it really comes down uh to put up or shut up time, you're nowhere to be found. And I don't like that. So, um yeah, I'll call her out. I don't have a problem with that. I would do it to her face, uh, but she doesn't show up. <laughs> um, okay, so we got to close up. Um, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find the show, what time it's on, all that good stuff? Yeah, uh, so uh, all my stuff's in Linktree. It's linktree.com backslash extra bulla. The show is on Thursday nights, uh, usually between 7 and 9 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, just depends on the guest and who's on. So tomorrow night, uh, we're going down the rabbit hole. I'm really looking forward to this one. I mean, I, I love all the shows, but this one in particular, because my conspiracy mind and my tinfoil hat, I got it all polished up and everything. I got uh, Marcus Cage and uh, Cy Lawson from Political Matrix on, and st- our, our boy Steve Poikinen, Poikin Nostradamus. He's going to be on there too from Slow News Day and Anarchy in the Morning. And basically, I'm just going to sit back and eat popcorn and let these guys blow my mind with all these uh, deep <laughs> theories about what's going on, that sort of thing. Uh, It'll get tomorrow, weird. Tomorrow. Oh, it's going to get really weird, and I, I at least I hope so. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm counting on it, actually. But uh, tomorrow is going to be, I'm going to be on KRTD once I, my usual Wednesday show with Jimmy Sunderland. We do the news at 1 p.m. Eastern. I believe Reef Breland's doing like a 420 show thing. I might pop into that tomorrow. And, They're going to uh, cut you off. They're that- going to cut you off. Okay, that's all we got time for. I I'm sorry, Warren. I love Don't you. Go I love you. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow, guys. 3 p.m. Eastern. Everybody hang tight for more here from TNT Radio.